The following is a presentation of TFNN. The TFNN Bull Bear Trading Hour. Every trading day, live at 10 a.m. Eastern. Call now, toll free at 877-927-6648 or internationally at 727-873-7618. The TFNN Bull Bear Trading Hour. Now, Tom and Tommy O'Brien. Welcome, folks. Appreciate your growling and problem with us out here in this. Uh... Hey, today was Brexit Day. Is it? That's right. It is the 29th. <laughs> how, how quickly things change. Oh, my God. Let's take a look at this market out here. We have the Dow Industrials right now up 111, NASDAQ up 44, S&P's up 10, gold contract. Uh, gold saved itself, folks. Uh, tested uh, lower today, which we needed because we had so much volume yesterday. Didn't break the lower swing point, which is impressive. Now we got it up 760 at 1303. Silver, uh, silver did break the swing yesterday. So silver uh, up today, but needs a lot more help. Up 19 cents trading, $15.17. And uh, light sweet crude uh, banged into that 60. Seems like everything is up today. Yeah. Um, well, except for bonds, maybe. Yeah, you got. You got they're uh, up in yield. Lift is giving the market a lift. Yeah, we'll see, right? I heard 1045 maybe. They might start trading towards the end of this hour. We'll yeah. see where they, they priced at 72. I imagine it's going to open uh, above and, that, and you know, to say you the know least. You know what's wild, too, folks, is that the, so the two owners have a super voting stock, right? Okay. But the amazing part is, like, their super voting stock gets votes for 49% of the company. Okay. But yet they hardly own any of the company. Like between both of them, they only, not only, sure. they, they were going to be worth $1.2 billion this morning. Okay. But like that's nothing compared yeah. to share-wise. I think the company's going to be worth more than 20. So that would be about 5% of the company. Yeah. yeah. And they have 49% voting yeah. rights. I mean, even, even Zuckerberg on Facebook, um, maybe we can pull up even yeah. what he owns because it's not 50% and he's got the same thing. And it's a staggering amount, but it's not 50% and he owns all the voting shares, though. All right. Yeah. Notes and bonds, you get the 10-year note down uh, 13 ticks, trading at uh, 124.03, 30 years off 22 at 149.11, and King Dollar. King Dollar's uh, down 59 ticks, trading 96.705. Now, it's going to be interesting with King Dollar is that it got over the February 15th high yesterday, was over it this morning, back under it this morning, now you're over it again. It's 96, uh, 685, I believe is the number you got to keep your eye okay. on. Yeah. Let's see, see this. Because this is all about, we get moving pieces in, in Asia for sure. I mean, yep. in, uh, in the UK. Well, Asia too, but not really. Asia no, no, I... Yeah, it's 96, 685. That's okay. the number. And what, what day? That's February what, February the high 15th. 15th. Okay. And the reason I'm, I'm doing that is that, you know, well, it's a high, of course, okay? Yeah. But on March 7th, you took it out and then gave it up. It's sure. like, okay, so. And it's kind of nice that that February 15th one happens to correlate to this, like, December 15th, right? It 14th, does. yeah. So, yeah. Um, yeah. There's, Anytime there's, you get a couple tops to the same level. There's some resistance up there. So if we go over, we take a look at the pound. It's going to be about the pound. They got the another vote today, right? They don't. Um, yeah. And it's going to be really cool because. I'm learning a lot about Parliament. No, not really, but I'm learning they vote a lot. <laughs> they, <laughs> it's 2.30. Their time, so okay. it's at 10.30. I believe 10 it's 10.30 our, our time, right. Four hours. Yeah. You know, so we're going to get some action out here. Yeah. Um, restoration hardware, that's taking a hit out here this morning. Yeah. And you're going to see, this is in a monster consolidation. Uh, you know, you, you'll see how this is kind of set up. It's pretty wild. It's a, it's a large consolidation, man. I mean, at Broken Topside, what's that, May of, uh, June of 2018. Yes. And, um, you know, couldn't make it. Couldn't make it, uh... You're pushing, let's see, so that's a weekly, you're pushing them with 3.9 million versus 16 million. What's funny was, is that I can almost peg that that's probably where their earnings are every day on that. Uh, oh, on yeah. That. So there's those, their those, earnings, those, right? Yeah. There's their, what's Monster that? Monster bars yep, so we're June at. to September right. to December to March. Isn't um, that cool? You know, the, the, the volume really ramps up because it seems like they've been a bit surprising, as in they've either over, overachieved or yes. underachieved. Yes, um, yeah. they they're, they got to work on their guidance, I suspect. Oh, I suspect, no yeah. doubt. Let's go take a look at uh, the higher volume equities. And, the, I, you know, we'll see what kind of volume we get in this market out here today. Um, you get... Um, Wells Fargo, how about that, right? The CEO is oh, out. Oh, yeah. Highest, uh, and expected to be the highest volume stock. I know it was up with the market layer. Oh, look at that, though. It's down. Yeah. Remarkable. Yeah. So uh, you're going to have, they, they had brought in 12 outsiders okay. last year to basically see if they could clean this thing up. 
Is that some of the people on their board as well you're talking about? Yeah, yeah. And, then, and the one of the outsiders now, he was one of the big law firms. Okay. He's going to take over. Uh, <laughs> good luck with that. But, uh, you know, yeah. it's, they, they need clean blood. They yes, need, no need, matter what. Yeah. And I don't, you know, from, from what you had heard, it wasn't like... Was, was that the CEO at the time? No. That's he, what I thought. He, but he, he was been, there, though. But he was there for 31 years. Yeah. Right. It was Stump that they got yeah. rid of. Yeah. He came in. Yeah. You know, bottom yeah. line is that if you're already a top dog in yeah. those... Yeah, and not even to say he had any yeah. partner, right? No. But no, I agree. Just but, public sentiment. Even, you know, the analysis this morning saying that way just, you know, the regulators lay off, the politicians lay off a little bit, even if it's... And it's true, for well, sure. Well, it's so ingrained in that bureaucracy. Yeah. I mean, they, bureaucracies, folks, are very hard to move. You know, it's I mean, quite a company in you, terms you, of that, yeah. Yeah, uh, you know, try pushing a bureaucracy around. It's like change okay, in anything. Everyone that big has is their tough. own little, you know, kingdoms inside of these big corporations. There's no two ways yeah. about that. Yeah. Let's go take a look at the uh, Dow Industrials uh, strength versus the weakness uh, inside the Dow Industrials out here. So point wise. You got uh, Caterpillar putting 23 positive points, Boeing 17, United Health uh, 13, taken away from it. Dow DuPont, nothing yeah. big, six. Now, here's what's always, uh, you can keep going, but it's yeah. always so interesting because, I mean, this is a big number for Dow DuPont, right? Because they're down like 2%. Yes. Because they're a $50 stock. Well, Boeing, if Boeing would be up 2%, <laughs> that would be up $70 um, to correlate of where that would be in the points, right? Is that right? No, it would be up $3, no, $7. Um, what is the market cap on Dow DuPont? Can we go to that yeah. description? Because watch how, I mean, it's just so skewed. They're a big company, $115 billion. They're yeah. putting like nothing into it, you know, right. versus a company like Boeing, right? And yeah. I think they're going to be, what are they, 200? 213. So yeah. they're, double, they're only double the size. But you can see the impact that it's they have huge, on that. Yeah. Huge impact. There's no two ways about that. Pretty, pretty wild as we uh, shake this out. So if we do go overseas and just take a look at what the FTSE is doing out here today, let's see. We're, so it's up a half a percent. We'll see where this is going to shake out, because this is going to, yeah, nothing heavy. You know, what was heavy last night, folks, is Asia. Watch this. Yeah, oh. that's why when you said Asia instead of yeah. England, I was like, well, there's an Asia factor going Look on, for sure. Shanghai was up another 3.2%. Yeah. Now, you had Mnuchin over there, right, with Robert Lighthizer. Okay. Mnuchin tweeted between 3 and 4 in the morning that things had gone well. Vagueness, of course, but, but not... not um, and it's the first time that they've been over there to meet in person, I believe, in two, three weeks. So right. probably a good thing to be meeting if you and want to have a deal in general. Um, yeah, particularly, I think, because you had Mnuchin with them, right? That, that's, that's, what, I mean, that's a yeah, big Yeah, you have the Treasury yeah. Secretary, right. for sure. I mean, right. the next uh, person would be the president to get right. it done, right? right? And that's so... Right. So if he's coming out saying good things, the market... And if you look at the Shanghai, you know, this is, this is something that wants to go higher. So this is really intriguing, you know, when you take a look at this. I mean, you, you had monster price spread out here in February. You know, it looks like it wants to get into that 35000 you know. But we did get, uh, this is going to be interesting in the housing market, because the housing numbers went up dramatically. Yeah, okay. Right here. They, this, is, this caught, uh, sales of new homes rebounded to the best pace in almost a year and exceeded estimates in February, led by the Midwest as lower mortgage costs. It's going to be lower mortgage costs. I mean, yes. And if that's in February, folks, let me tell you something. The move um, down uh, went up pretty cool. So 667,000 annualized. Yeah. Um, compares with January's 636. Yeah. Stay right there, folks. Tommy and I come right back. The Taz Profile Scanner is the most revolutionary piece of trading software that you will ever try. Wouldn't you like to approach the markets with confidence? As you begin your trading day, it's likely that you'll be faced with lots of decisions. In order to make the best decision, the first thing you'll need is a strategy that will help you minimize your risks. Whether we're in a bull or bear market, a good strategy is to have the tools needed to help you scan and analyze the markets before you trade. The Taz Profile Scanner instantly scans and filters over 2,500 global financial markets, such as stocks, ETFs, commodity futures, and Forex. Headed by Steve Dahl, president of Taz Market Profile, the Taz Profile Scanner understands that in today's technological world, the use of top flight software applications, automated trading algorithms, and technical analysis expertise is essential to successful trading in today's market. 
Whether you're looking at the trade matrix, the ETF heat grid, the market breadth, the landscape charts, or the many other features of the TAS Profile Scanner, this is a piece of software that will revolutionize how you look at the markets and set up your trades. The team at TAS has even put together a 12-part video series to walk you through every aspect of the TAS Profile Scanner, which you can find directly on the TAS Order page at TFNN.com. Sign up now for only $97 a month with a risk-free 30-day trial so you have nothing to lose and everything to gain. See for yourself how you can harness the full power of the TAS Profile Scanner by visiting the front page of TFNN.com today and you'll find the TAS Profile Scanner under the Services section. Remember, with a 30-day money-back guarantee, you have nothing to lose. Don't let another day pass you by without trying out this amazing piece of software that will revolutionize how you look at the market and how you place trades. Sign up today. Many of our new listeners have heard about The Tiger's Den. The Tiger's Den is a lively community where professional traders and investors can meet, exchange ideas and information in a comfortable, moderated atmosphere. Hear all of the TFNN shows, plus see all of the charts as they happen live and have access to archives of all of those charts. You can test drive The Tiger's Den absolutely free for 30 days and greatly enrich your knowledge of these markets and how to make your money work for you. Details on The Tiger's Den are on the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN has launched our brand new website. You can still visit us at the same TFNN.com URL, but when you do, you'll see a new and improved homepage with a much simpler navigation, whether you're watching Tiger TV live in high definition or just accessing your newsletter subscriptions. We even have new pricing in six months and yearly options. Check out the new TFNN.com now and experience all the upgrades. TFNN.com, educating investors. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-873-7618. Welcome back, folks. Uh, Dow Industrial is up 127. You get the Nasdaq up 52. S&P is up 13, up 11 and a half. And we take a look at this uh, Lyft IPO, which uh, I suspect is going to uh, start trading sometime, um, hopefully, when we're on the air here. Yeah, they'd speculate at 1045, but who knows, yeah. right? They might. They, they got to get that market paired, I'm sure, and figure out. Um, so lots of cool stuff. Just And we were just even talking about it during the break. Um, so... 10 times the valuation they're going to be their revenue. I believe their revenue is around 2.2 billion. Yeah. Uh, loss of a 911 million. Yes. Okay. In one year. They had bookings of 8.1 billion. So they're getting the bookings. A lot of the drivers getting a lot of that money. That's yeah. why their revenue only being 2.2 billion, even though they're booking 8.1 billion. Um, and so loss. The value in it, folks, at 10 times revenue, yes. which is just not not. Right. Not and that's the 2.2 billion number, yeah, right. right? So that's right. why they're coming in at like 22, 24 billion dollars for a total revenue. Um, and let's see. So where do they have the information about who's going public? There we are. Uh, yeah. Well, this was cool part of it. So as they kick off trading, right? There's a couple of the stocks you can watch. GM. They made a big investment in Lyft. Yeah. So if Lyft starts They're rocking, gonna you're, you're going to see the GM yep. trade higher, as well as some of the Lyft competitors. And if you know the market really starts loving Lyft. It would make sense that the people they're coming for, if Lyft really does well, are those any other any other person in the ride-sharing business, and rental cars are definitely in that right. business. And it looks like uh, in th in this particular article, folks, is that Uber's going to try to kick theirs off in April. Yeah, you know? and that's so what I was. Did I blow past it? We're right here. No, it was right. It was right there. Down here. Uh, that's where we just were. There it is, right there. Competitors of Uber is expected to publicly file for its offering in April. Uh, and Slack, uh, right after that. Right yeah. after that. So, yep. how how this baby kicks off and trades is going to be pretty amazing too, folks. There's no doubt. Yeah, you know? even with speculating, it's interesting. They get to market first. I wonder what the strategy was. Uh, yeah. Even within Uber, like, were they racing for it? I don't know, right? Because and it's kind of cool that they're going to get to watch this, and then they go, okay, now we're definitely sure we're going public. Versus if there wasn't market sentiment for a stock, the, a company. That was losing a billion dollars 
and you're only taking in 2.2. That's a big mismatch. You know, that's, that's not a lot of revenue to be burning through a billion dollars. But I, 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 that doesn't. I mean, I think if you bought Lyft, I think, and you, you were going to hold it for a while, these companies are going to do some pretty amazing things over the next five or ten years. No, um, I hear. And is you know, inside of this. What we want to watch also, folks, is Hertz and Avis, because yeah. they, they, they're interviewing one of the founders, and one of the founders is saying flat out that uh, he feels that they are competition just for people buying new cars, period. Never mind the rental market. Yep. Just buying new cars. Yep. You know? And yep. it's absolutely right. Yeah. You know, th think about it. You know, I think people are going to have a car, but do you have a second car? I don't know. It's yeah. depending where you live. You yes. know what I mean? I, I mean, it's, we can get it anywhere downtown. St. Pete, when I say downtown, let's say, you know, from the first block to like the, you know, 35th block, if you're anywhere in the middle, it's like from 650 to $10 to get sure. anywhere. Yeah. Now, picture, in a major city, folks, parking is more than that. Oh, yeah. You know? Yeah. And so, and, you know, there's... I mean, if you live in New York City, you're already well aware you don't oh, own yeah. a car, no matter yeah. what. Right. Um, right. So it's only becoming easier, right. for sure. Yeah. So they're the two founders, I believe, on there. And uh, there you go. We compete with car ownership. There you go, yeah. totally. And that's, that's why you have companies like GM saying, we're going to diversify and get some action here. Yes. Because they might be coming for us. And, and the likes of Tesla. I mean, Tesla's already talked about that you get the automated vehicles, right, self-driving. The Tesla's going to have a fleet of self-driving Teslas right. that are going to start competing directly with them. So Lyft and Uber are not the only... And, um, and what's going to happen here, of course, is that there's going to be plenty of fund managers that are banking on the aspect, or investors in general banking on the aspect, that 10 years from now, none of these cars are going to have drivers. And if right. they don't have drivers, guess what, folks? All of a sudden... Printing that cash. Uh, yeah. The, Print it. Print the it away. acceleration to the bottom line has gone up dramatically. Yeah. You know. And so, you know, they talk about that. I think we're years away. Years can mean a lot yeah. of things. I'd agree we're years away from the public accepting the type of thing we're self-driving. Um, but in five years, and these are the founders talking, that uh, they envision riders subscribing to a package of miles, giving up their car, right, just to be in the Lyft ec ecosystem. I think people will be subscribing to miles. Pretty cool when I they talk. Right. Um, yeah. yeah. Yes, definitely. Yeah. I mean, you, 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 you come pretty close to ballparking your average mileage, right? Right. Well, in a month, and then yeah, you can yeah. just probably add on when you want to do a trip or right. whatever it is, right? Yeah. But most people, whether right. it's, you know, a 1,000 miles a month, you're pretty close to the same amount of miles, give or take. So I could see that really flying. Yeah. And it's so convenient. The convenience uh, of just hitting your phone, getting picked up, and getting dropped off without parking your car, yes. to me, is amazing. Oh, you know definitely. What I mean? Especially and with, you know, alcohol involved, of course, oh, easiest yeah. decision ever. Right. Um, and, yeah, this, this talks about the, their decision to give the founders near-majority control over the company. Um, should be interesting. Oh, it's going to be wild watching the ba this baby shit. So here, wait, they, sorry, they, they keep just updating yeah. it. So um, Lyft sold 32.5 million shares, or about 11% of the okay. company's total Class A and B shares. Relatively small float of the share of the stock that is available to buy and sell. That can make Lyft stock price volatile in the early days and months. Uh, yeah, I could say so, right? Oh, yeah, a big time. And then... You know how the how how this trades right off the bat, and they, you know they're holding this market up. Uh, S and P's just got hit a little, but it's the end of the quarter too. There's a lot of I influence know. there, right? And it's it's one of the best quarters. Um, and isn't it so smart how they do it? Well, now, it, right? it, it? It's so smart how they do it. It's, it's the end of the they quarter. They price it the final it's day. It's Mendo dressing the yeah. you, and it, it makes sense. You got to put everything you oh, can you want everything into you. market stability in order to push more paper right? out. The probability it's going to go well it right. just increases with every one. Right. So talking about just how it does on the day of being a reliable indicator of how it's going to do in the future. Over the past year, IPOs that gained in their first session are now trading 27% above their IPO prices, weighted by deal size, but new issues that dropped are trading just 0.3, so basically flat. You go down the first day, right. you're basically trading flat for the rest of the year Listen on the that, average. Look at that number. Tell them that number. This one? Yeah. This trend holds true over the longer term. Since 2008, IPOs that jumped in their debut, now trading an average of 163% higher. Now, this is over 11 years. Yes. You better be up right. some good money over 11 years. But those that finished their last day in the red are, again, basically flat up 2.3% over huh? 11 years. Um, yeah, pretty remarkable. And um, I wonder what... I wonder how that average skews. So average versus the median, which is like the middle number, because yeah. you might have a Facebook that's up like 
20 folds. Okay. And then they skew the whole thing, right? Because right. you have one company that Facebook trades up positive. Right. Um, you know, you might have had Netflix. I don't know when they went public, probably before 2008. Yeah. But um, the average isn't always indicative where you could have every single company being small and then you just have two or the three monsters. big outliers, right? Yeah. And then the average falls actually where no company is. Right. You know what I'm talking about? Versus if you and take... And how do they get the median then? That's the median is, so let's say there's 100 companies that went public. Right. Show me where the 50th company is. Don't oh, tell me cool. the average. Okay. So if you cool. have 80 companies okay. near the bottom right. and you have 20 that are just high flyers, yeah. the average might be really good. Yeah. But if you take the median of that number, yeah. you're in that cluster of 80 cool. on the bottom. Okay. So okay. That's, uh, those two numbers are, are very there. reflective, right? Yeah. And it's because yeah. of that instance. But nonetheless, right, first day, it's important. And I imagine with all this talk, everybody loves ride sharing. You can't buy a company yet to be in that market, right? And, That's uh, right. And guess what? Today, you can. Let's put it up right now. There we go. That's waiting. Okay. Price not available yet, but it's going to be coming up. Stay right there, folks. Tommy and I come right back. Hi, folks. Tom O'Brien here. If you'd like to get my daily newsletter, Market Insights, then now is a great time to sign up for a 30-day free trial. Every morning by 9.30, I send out my morning letter to subscribers with market commentary on a variety of markets, currencies, and commodities to keep investors up to date on the day's trading action. Included in Market Insights are specific buy and sell recommendations for stocks, ETFs, and even options, with stops and price targets included for every trade in my newsletter. If you'd like to try my newsletter risk-free for 30 days, then head over to the front page of TFN and you'll find Market Insights under Trading Newsletters. I use my years of trading experience to bisect and dissect the market every morning and give my subscribers the most important information they need to know for the day ahead. I even issue afternoon updates for my subscribers whenever warranted with important market action. I'm always scouring the market for the next great trading opportunity. Sign up for your 30-day free trial to my daily newsletter, Market Insights, today by visiting the front page of TFNN.com. Wow! Go get them, folks! The Path of Least Resistance is David White's daily trading newsletter, and if you're looking for active trading ideas, then now's a perfect time for a 30-day free trial to this powerful daily trading advisory service. David uses his years of trading experience to offer his subscribers his trading ideas each morning in his Path of Least Resistance newsletter. Using a combination of equity trades along with options, David keeps his subscribers up to date with all pertinent market information with intraday afternoon updates when warranted. Don't miss out on this great chance to get a 30-day free trial to David's daily newsletter, The Path of Least Resistance, with no obligation to pay anything. David has been delivering solid recommendations for his subscribers recently, and if you'd like to see the type of newsletter he delivers every morning, then visit the front page of TFNN, and you'll find The Path of Least Resistance under Trading Newsletters. For all the details, and to start your 30-day free trial today, log on to TFNN.com now. TFNN is excited about our new software charting program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts. In collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. Using this first-of-its-kind program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts allows you to scan thousands of stocks for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, ABC's, Butterflies, and much more. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts is designed to help you when scouring the markets for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that many investors spend days, weeks, or even months searching to find. And right now, we're offering licenses available at only $79 a month. We are so confident that you're going to love this new charting software that will even give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Get your copy of The Art of Timing the Trade Charts today by visiting tfnn.com. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of tfnn.com. <laughs> Welcome back, folks. Uh, Dow Industrial is up 135. We get the Nasdaq up 50. S&P is up 11 and a half. And we're going to be getting our man, Mr. Basil Chapman, up, right? Uh, April 5th? I believe April he, 3rd. We'll April, pull it April up. Third. April 3rd. Let's uh, not jump too far into April already. No, no believe me. I don't <laughs> want to. I know. 
Uh, yeah, so today, last day of March, Monday, April 1st, Wednesday, April 3rd, Basil, in there with subscribers to the opening call. Anything goes, the stock market's key phase. You'll have a live webinar next Wednesday at 5 o'clock. Subscribers to the opening call. If you're already subscribed, you're all set. You can check this out, and he's going to be talking about a variety of things, talking about the tools he's using, the outlook for this year, next year, the risks versus potential rewards he's looking at in the market, specific sectors. I wonder stocks. if they're going to have to add some new fangs. <laughs> right? Where's Lyft fit into let's that? See, yeah. Let's, uh, so Maybe Uber will be in there, throw a U in there somewhere. I know. I know. Yeah. Um, and what, what were the other ones they mentioned? Slack, um, yeah. Uber. I feel like there's one more as well that we're not, uh, that's in there, that unicorn that might be coming down the pipeline. Uh, yeah, so workshop will be archived. And uh, as I mentioned before, you sign up. Basil's got two archive workshops already available to subscribers. You get those immediately, two 90-minute workshops. And, uh, of course, you get the opening call, man. Basil, I think he had six or seven charts this morning. He'll usually post something on Saturday, sitting there charting the market on Saturday, yeah. and then Sunday night, checking out what's happening as it's opening. And then, of course, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. So check that out. You get 30 days money-back guarantee. And uh, Wednesday, April 3rd, man, coming up. Pretty amazing. Coming up. That's right. So let's just go overseas for a second. Let me just pull this up to see. Because I believe, right, if, uh, okay, so here we go, top live. Today I, is the last day. I think this is right <laughs> when they're starting. Uh, I think it's 2, it's 2.30. Uh, they're calling, order, order. There you go. There we go. Right, they're right on time, man. You know, I can tell you something, man. These votes go so quick, and the parliament over there, it's a mind blower. Um, so <laughs> we'll see what they say, but they go quick. Right. So, yeah, they're, they're voting as of 10.26 already. So I guess May had made her appeal already. If you want to deliver okay. Brexit, this is the moment. Um, so they've already done their haggling in terms of what you're doing. Uh, May made her plea, I'm sure. She says if the government accepts the deal, the next bill will include the amendment put forward by Labor MP Gareth Snell. Snell's proposal, backed by fellow Labor MP Lisa Nandy, Caroline Flint, Rosie Cooper, would have empowered the House of Commons to set the direction of the UK negotiations on its future relationship with the EU and give it a final say on any eventual deal. Um, so she's making concessions still, right? Boy, this is going to be wild watching this shake out, man. I think we're going to get it, like right now. If yeah. they're already voting, they vote them, they count it. So she points out it's a matter of deep personal regret that the UK isn't leaving the EU today on its originally scheduled Brexit day. That's right, March 29th. Yeah. Um, and May says people ask her why bother? Because it's the last opportunity to guarantee Brexit, putting the hard sell on. Oh, yeah. yeah. And there's, there's a, it seems that there's a lot of um, ministers that have come to her side because of the fact that they were worrying that, okay, it's going to be a year and a half. Yes. It's going to have to, and then have to it, vote for the European. It might not happen, right. Exactly. You have to participate right. in EU elections. And right. then, um, you know, anytime it doesn't happen, uh, the risk probably goes up oh. in terms of a, a re-vote at some, at some time. There's no doubt. And so look at that volatility, no, man. Exactly. So we, we look at this pound. So she lost by, I think, I think they said 140 votes last time. So there's, there's a, there are people who have swung, right? But there's a lot of people oh. they got to get. Huge. Um, and Huge I don't know if they, they don't know if they have those numbers just yet. Yeah. You know, the thing that's amazing is that most times that uh, in, you know, our Congress, they don't even put things up to vote unless they know they got it, unless it's so close. Sure. You know, so yeah. I, I think this one they've thrown... Uh, <laughs> Maybe the man McCain, they never knew what he was thinking in, the, in a good way, right? That's you know, right. That's, there's a that's few right. classic, but you're that's, right. They, they yeah. usually have a, a pretty good hold on everything. Uh, on this one, I don't think it's possible to, because people haven't committed. They just won't commit until right. like that moment because right. what if May says something in that speech before the vote that they don't like, right? Or something like that. I, I mean, that's yeah. where... It's just pretty amazing. It is amazing. Chaos. It is complete chaos. You know. And if we go so. take... So you had... What you had last night, you had the euro trying to get higher, the pound trying to get higher, and that's when the dollar had failed. But both of those now have basically pulled back a bit, you know? So it's like, okay. they're, they're like saying, like, you know, the euro's just kind of laying at these lows that it's been hanging out at, at the buck 12. Saying, what's happening? What's the, yeah, exactly. You know? Boy, oh boy, man. I am so glad that uh, we're not in euros or pounds. Um, because it's, you know, it's, oh, da we, it's we dangerous. We might see some volatility. Yeah, it's dangerous. Depending on what happens. Right. You know? I mean, if she ever loses by 140 again, watch out. Oh, man. Yeah. I don't think it. that's going to happen, right. but... 
doesn't yeah. mean we might not get some surprises. No, there's, yeah. there's no doubt about that. Let's go take a look at the uh, XLF inside the banks. So banks, yeah, still a little pop out here, but still having a hard time catching any price. You know? And JP Morgan, JPM. Yeah, that hasn't held price. Uh, Warren Buffett, he came out and said last night, yeah, it's about time that uh, the CEO went. Okay. And he, I think he's the largest owner of Wells Fargo. He so. might be, yeah. Yeah. Let's, let's take a look. Yeah, there yeah. it is, 9.89%. Oh. Not bad, 449 yeah. million shares. Yeah. So look at this one. This is interesting, folks, okay? This is surprising, actually. And I don't... I take this with a grain of salt. Buffett was claiming yesterday that he didn't realize that he went over 10% inside uh, Delta Airlines. Okay. And say, and I don't know what that means as to why that's so important, but maybe it is. So what happened is that on the 11th of March, he bought an additional 5.3 million shares, which, which took him over. Yep. And what he was saying, he was at his interview on CNBC, and what he's saying is that, um, yeah, so this quote just is, is really strange, too. I don't get it. Okay, what I didn't realize oh. was that the purchase had taken us over 10%, Buffett said Thursday in a wide-ranging interview on CNBC, from a benefit luncheon in Grapevine, Texas. I was already in territory I didn't plan to get. I was already in territory I didn't plan to get, so I decided to buy a whole bunch more. <laughs> so, okay, I'm going to read it again, I know. What I didn't realize was that the purchase had taken us over 10%. So I think what that's alluding to, number one, is that they did a buyback. Maybe their purchase? Buffett said on Thursday in a wide-ranging interview with CNBC from a luncheon. I was already in territory I didn't plan to get probably into. Buffett said, spurned the airline industry for years. So I decided to buy a whole bunch more. Yeah, if he didn't want to sure. be in that territory, why did he buy more? Uh, yeah. Anyway, let's... So we'll probably, maybe, maybe there are regulatory, when you get above 10%. I suspect there's probably going to be. That, because that, you might be coming for a hostile takeover or yeah. something like that, so you have to file whatever it is, right? So he probably said, all right, well, we, we just breached that. We have to file it anyway. Um, because what it what put him over, and I think that's maybe what's saying, right? That's what I think he's, he's so saying. So he that's was already over 10. He probably bought that 5 million shares extra. That's not what put him over, his increase of 5 million shares. What put him over was Delta basically taking shares out of the market, which increases everybody's ownership, yep. and he was probably sitting at 9.9 something percent. They did a buyback. And he I probably has the file, so if I get a file, just say, exactly. I buy more. I okay. wanted to buy more anyway. I wasn't going to do it, because then we would have had to come out and say we might be going after the stock. We own so much of it. Guess what? We got to do it anyway. Right. Buy 5 million shares. When's that lift? Pricing. Uh, it's it's got to be any minute. Yeah. Stay right there, folks. Tommy and I come right back. We have the Dow Industrials up 124, Nasdaq's up 49, S&P's up 11 and a half, gold up 450, silver up 17 cents, and King Dollar down 64 ticks, teetering at 96,700. If you're in the CD market and looking for a secure investment, the Tiger First Mortgage Program may work for you. The security for these first mortgages are building lots in the Tax Opportunity Zone in St. Petersburg, Florida. The Tax Act of 2018 set up tax-free zones across the country where you can build and hold for 10 years and pay no tax on the profits, which makes these lots valuable. The investment is anywhere from $30,000 to $75,000. The interest paid is 7% yearly paid on a monthly basis. According to Bankrate.com, the best rate for a four-year CD in the country as of February 20th is 3.1%. A $50,000 investment at a normal four-year CD rate of 3.1% would give you income of $1,550 per year or $6,200 over the four-year period. That same $50,000 investment in the Tiger First Mortgage Program would give you $3,500 per year or $14,000 over the four years. Which would you prefer, $6,200 or $14,000 of interest on your investment? If you would like more information about the Tiger First Mortgage Program, you can call me at 877-518-9190. That's 877-518-9190. If you haven't checked out the newsletters page of TFNN.com, what are you waiting for? All of the TFNN newsletters are informative, up-to-date, affordable, and a must-have for every trader looking to gain a competitive informational edge in today's markets. TFNN newsletters cover every aspect of the markets to offer you the very latest in market news. Plus, new subscribers get to test drive our newsletters risk-free for 30 days. From all aspects of the markets, including stocks, bonds, metals, commodities, and tech, there's a newsletter to fit your needs exclusively from TFNN. 
Stay informed each day you trade and get that competitive edge that will help you stay ahead of the game. Visit our newsletters page by going to TFNN.com and click the newsletters button near the top of the page. TFNN.com, educating investors. Biotech is booming, but for how long? Whether you think the biotech bull has room to run or has run its course, trade LABU or LABD. Direction's daily S&P Biotech three times bull and bear ETFs. Visit directioninvestments.com slash biotech today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the Direction shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact Direction shares at 866-476-7523. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV for the latest market information. <laughs> Welcome back, folks. Uh, a lot of moving pieces out here, man. You better talk quick. Look at this pound. Yeah. Ready? They just rejected uh, once again. There we go. So narrow defeat. I guess you call that narrow. 286 to 344. They lost by 149 votes last time. Now it's 58. 58. Um, and to wow. see just some of the reaction on the currencies, right? So there are the four currencies. This is your pound action. Yeah. Um, you know, you just saw a spike. We're trading at 130.25, almost at session lows, and we were just at 8.45, up at 131.23. So you're talking about a full penny um, in the last hour and a half, two hours, basically yeah. right on the dot. Yeah. And you know, it's going to be interesting, folks, because what has happened with this pound every time, every time it goes down, that reaction down has been a buy. So we'll see how this shakes out. Hey, you if know. you're listening to the prime minister, the implications of that decision are grave. We'll see what happens. It's always a negotiation, as yeah. in how could she say anything else when she just told them this was their last chance, right? That was pretty decisive, as in they lost by 58. It wasn't even close. It'd be interesting to see how many of the labor MPs may try to woo to her side, voted for the deal. Um, and they got the pound over here, and it's 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 going to be about below 130 right now. Check that out. Look at that. 129. Yeah. Um, as the market's just kind of yeah, taken taken in, what that, that might mean. Go for it. You better go quick. We're going to be at 128. No I time. Know. Look at that. Yeah, it's yep. breaking out slow. There you go. It's breaking well from this morning. Yep. We yep. already just did it. Off Let's the see. cliff. Yeah. You know, it's intriguing, folks. What ends up happening is markets can snap these people back into place in a second. If that pound gets really destroyed, it's going to be like, okay, you're, you're taking all our wealth, meaning the citizens of sure, the UK. Sure, it's I like, hear. what are you doing, man? Yeah. Do you know what I mean? So, yeah. this, it's. Yeah, so that low 129.49 from March 11th, we're, we're, coming on, we're coming for that fast. Yeah, we are. And uh, the next one would be down here at 127.71 from February 14th. And then you're going all the way back to that dramatic spike. I believe that was when uh, she got rejected the first time, but then the market spiked higher on that rejection. Yeah. On one of the votes. That was one of the votes. It was one That's, of the votes. Yeah. This is the one that you nailed right there. Okay, January fifteenth. Yeah. Wow. That's what had happened that that that, that was, was one of the votes then. Yeah. That was. That was yeah. so this this was I before just forget the vote. What that no, was. no, you're right. You're right. Thing, you're right. It yeah. was. It was right. this one. Because it right. had higher. It's a mark it's remarkable. This did the same thing. And that's where I think you know, you get the idea that, listen, man, this thing keeps tanking, but then they figure something out and it spikes. Right. And look at that reversal in terms of that Huge. day, right? Yeah. Same thing on this day. Yeah. I don't know if we're going to get the same thing on today uh, because listen, things have changed. It's I not have. quite the... No, uh, I, there's yeah. no doubt, man. You know, Some of the fear back then was a hard Brexit. Yes. And when the deal got nagged and people, they just realized, okay, we're going to either push it back, and they did, right? They extended two weeks. Hard Brexit came off the table. The pound got some strength off that. 
Um, but now you would suspect, suspect it could be back on the table because if they can't make a deal, somebody might just pull the shoot and see what happens. Well, the intriguing thing about this is that, okay, you know, it had a reaction in our market in the S&Ps too. You know, we'll see, we'll see where this shakes out, but, you know, the... The E minis just went from 2833. It's yeah. only down five points, but five points is five points, and yes. you've only been up 11. Yeah. You know, what it just did, the E minis, let's see. So the number. Yeah, yeah like seven o'clock last night. Yeah. I think that was Asia opened, um, and the market spiked higher. Yeah. That 29, no, 2829 is an important number, folks, because that's where we, you know, did break out this morning at, uh, what's that, 7 o'clock this morning? Yes. You break back underneath that, and guess what? Yeah. Now you're visiting your friends in, in the lower uh, end. Let's get out. Yeah. So what do you see we got here, folks? This is pretty cool. So um, we got a report yeah. on Lyft. Uh, of course, this would be filled out with a bunch of more numbers if it was actually trading yet, if it actually had earnings yet. But some of the cool factors here, they really go over earnings. And uh, Look at their growth already. profitability, yeah. So they didn't have anything until 2016. They don't even put it in a quarter, so maybe that's their entire year, 343. Yes. By 2017, 1.06. They basically double it exactly to 2018, and then they have their forecast for 19 and 20. Remarkable thing here is I wonder how they get to the earnings side because they lost a boatload, as we've been talking about, 2018, 911 million. Yeah. However, that translates to the 43. Um, but they have almost break-even numbers to, you know, barely. I mean, that might as well be considered break-even if you're losing $43 a share this year, uh, as in 2018. And then three. And then three. Um, if they ever do that, man, that would be, like, insane. Yeah. And, you know, $3.51 in terms of, you know, they took in $1.06 all of 2017, and they are going to reach that number by the fourth quarter of this year alone. They'll be pulling in a billion dollars. Days. Yeah. Pretty intense. Yeah. And we'll see whether it's uh, going to shake the baby out. Right? Yeah. Let's see if any action is coming up on the screen. Price is not yet available. 1047. We'll see what happens. And that's, again, the shares are outstanding, 273. And they're going to be floating about 32 million of them. Yeah. For the end of the month, we get a lot of action out here. We sure there's, do, there's man. There's no doubt about it. Yeah. And coming into today, I believe the S&P was up more than 12% on the quarter. Dow wow. up more than 10% on the quarter. Biggest number since 2007, 2009. Big numbers for 90 days to there's, be up that there's much. There's no doubt. Yeah. We well, get over and we take a look at that uh, dollar index, of course, because the, the pound and the, as well as the oh, euro you is it, moving right? that around. Yeah. Yeah. So... Still only 11,000 contracts, nothing, nothing big there. And that, now, I guess we, we're going to know, now what's the next announcement by Theresa May? That's, I was just going to go back. Right. I want to see more updates about, yeah. uh, because I imagine they're going to have plenty to talk about in terms of what is the next step. They're going to have to talk quick, too. So May loses by 58 votes, as we said. May indicates she's going to work to prevent the U.K. dropping out of the E.U. without a deal right away. They're talking about hard Brexit, right? That yeah. should be a fear. I will continue to press the case for an orderly Brexit. Uh, if the European Council President, Donald Tusk, is calling an, an emergency EU summit for April 10th, that becomes the deadline for the Parliament to agree on something, right? So these are just questions. They're talking about what you're thinking about. Let's see. Corbyn calls for a general election, something that a lot of MPs are now talking about privately. Uh, he's calling for May to quit, the pound dropping as we talk about. Labor's Corbyn asked May to finally accept that Parliament won't accept her deal and is concerned she's going to try and bring it back for another one. She is. Four though. times the charm, man. <laughs> We're changing it up. Yeah. No, I, I, I would say the same thing. I mean, why not, right? If, if she's you're gonna, close. So it was, was it 52 she, or 58? 58 close. from okay. 149, That's, and that would be her argument, right? right? Um, because you're at 58, that means you really just got to flip 30 people, yeah. right? Because then you flip it, 30 right. people go from the other side to yours. Yeah. And if you're one of those 30 people, but guess what? Why didn't you flip them this time if, that, if they're already flippable? Because right. I think the, the world kind of really did see this might be as, um, yeah, I, f I fear we're reaching the limits of this process in this house. Yeah, I don't know where you go next. So Tusk calls emergency EU summit on Brexit on April 10th. So we'll see. We'll see what that, April 10th, good. April 10th. That's right around the corner. What is that? That is going to be, that is going to be two weeks, uh, a week from next Wednesday. Yeah. A week from Basil's workshop. We'll have to get him back in action. Oh. No. I'm telling you, man. Yeah. Yeah, well, we'll see what the citizens of the U.K. have to say. You oh, know, boy. You know, you get a couple of these people saying, yeah, the deal's not going through. Well, guess what? They voted for the deal, folks. I so agree, man. That's it. Back we'll, up. We'll, we'll see whether they uh, get a little revolt going, um, yeah. you know, over there over the weekend. Um,
They'll be talking about it, I imagine, no matter what. Yeah. Um, Dow Industrials right now up 69. You get the Nasdaq at 28. S&P's up four and a half. Our market's having a tough time uh, holding price here. This S&P. Um, yeah, Nasdaq. Come right back. Yeah. I'm certain you are or strive to be one of the best of the best at everything you do in life. It's the most common trait that we tigers and tigresses share. If you're looking to become the best of the best when it comes to managing your money, let me teach you to do what most wealth managers tell you can't be done, which is how to time the markets. I'm Steve Rhodes, author of Mastering Probability, and for the last 12 months, Timer Digest has been tracking my newsletter signals, which have earned me the ranking as their number one market timer in the nation for the S&P 500 for the last 12, six, and three months. Timer Digest also ranks me as the number one market timer for gold as well. The fact is, markets can be timed, and I'll teach you the exact set of tools that I use that has transformed me into one of the best at what I do. Sign up for Mastering Probability today by clicking on the newsletter tab on the homepage of TFNN.com and get immediate access to workshops where I take you step-by-step step how to use an extraordinary set of tools as well as provide great market calls too. Sign up today. No matter what kind of trader you are, 2018 is a great time to try out a subscription to Tom O'Brien's Gold Report. Whether you just plan on diversifying your portfolio with some exposure to gold and gold mining equities, or you're a gold bull that sees 2018 as the year of commodities, now is a great time to sign up for the Gold Report. Tom O'Brien publishes his Gold Report every Monday morning before the market opens and covers a variety of topics including gold, silver, platinum, copper, the XAU and HUI, the dollar, bonds, South African Rand, as well as more than 20 of the most actively traded mining equities. Start your 2018 off with a bang and sign up for The Gold Report today. The Gold Report is a long-term newsletter where the focus is on building real wealth through the management of a successful portfolio of gold stocks. For all the details and to start your subscription right now, visit the front page of TFNN.com and you'll find The Gold Report under Investment Newsletters. Since 1984, Basil Chapman has been using the Chapman Wave methodology to advise traders of his expert market opinion. While originally hand-drawing charts from the late 1970s into the 1980s, Basil noticed that prices under most circumstances virtually always had a certain number of legs to the upside before declining sharply. Later, Basil found that computer software, which included the standard market technical indicators, enhanced the degree of accuracy in calling price turns, as well as market trend calls. Thus was born the Chapman Wave sequence. Using the Chapman Wave methodology along with other indicators, Basil Chapman advises his subscribers of his expert market opinion each market day with his opening call newsletter. Right now, you can get a two-week free trial to the opening call, Basil's daily trading newsletter, by visiting the front page of TFNN.com. Cancel at any time during that trial and pay absolutely nothing. Get your two-week free trial to Basil's newsletter, The Opening Call, today by visiting TFNN.com. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Welcome back, folks. Uh, yeah, they better push that lift <laughs> I was uh, looking at it, right. IPO out. They're saying in the den, they better get that lift IPO out because the market's falling. They are correct, man. Yeah, uh, there's, there's no doubt. Jumping back, so just some of the headlines again from Brexit. Um, so this was kind of cool. An update on our table showing how much support there's been for anything Brexit. This gives the votes in favor, right? See, January 15th, that is the day that you pointed out on the chart, the yeah. 15th. Votes in favor, 202. That was the biggest loss she had. Second vote, she got 242 votes for her okay. side. Motion to stay in EU Customs Union, 265. Motion calling on a referendum on Brexit agreement before ratified by Parliament, 268. And today, 286. The trend is up, but man, oh man, I think they, uh, from, from, from the parliamentary gentleman who said, we're not getting a third vote unless it's different, I imagine he'll have something to say if they try to put a fourth vote up that's not very different, um, as in good luck. Yeah, there's no doubt, man. And let's see where that pound is. Uh, is the commodity, is that going to go? Yeah, that'll do it for you. All right. Look at that. It's yeah. busting out the bottom. 
Yeah, I mean, quite yeah. a number, man. That low there, 129.78, um, under that 130 mark, and quite a number. And, you know, uh, <laughs> there's, so, there's so many twists in this thing, man. No, it's, man. It's just amazing. Yeah. Um, we'll see whether our markets can, uh, can hold. Uh, bottom line is that, uh, <laughs> can you, you know. Can you, I was just going to say, yeah. could you imagine being the Lyft executives? Because you know you're oh. all about the market today. And you know it's coming within the next hour at least, right? Something probably within minutes. But, they are scrambling they, right now to get that out. They, and they're watching the Nasdaq just go from 7,400 down to 7,360. Yeah. Um, yeah. The S and P is only up by four points now. Right. I'm saying no. sell. Get sell. it out. Get that out. Stay right there, folks. Your fast market coming up next. And we get our man, Mr. Basil Chapman, Steve Rhodes, Dave White. Be back this afternoon. Thanks, pal. Thanks, man. Wow! Go get them, folks.